Hey, and welcome to my channel. Today I am finishing up my DL44 blaster, famously used by Han Solo. This will be my version. If you saw my last video, you'll see where I was learning how to create a wood weather technique on the grips for this. I started by spray painting all the parts. I was playing with a couple of techniques, some of using steel right on the primer, some with doing a painted base coat with a dark brown, and some with painting with the black metal directly onto the primer. No matter which technique I used, they all came out pretty good. I liked all of them. Um, it doesn't show well on camera, but you can tell the difference between each one. It comes down to preference of what you like. I liked all of them. If I was to do it again, I probably would paint all everything in steel first and then paint with the black over it. And the reason why is because I took some sandpaper after I got done painting and I used it to rough up some edges. And if the steel was underneath, because I was using such a high grit of sandpaper, I could control how deep I went. But some of the parts also shouldn't be steel or black. So I went to the hobby store and I got this dry gold color here for hand painting. I had already pre-painted with gold, but the gold that I had wasn't really looking good on the parts. It looked kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say worn because worn would be a good word, but it just, it didn't look good. This was a much brighter, uh, vibrant gold and it, it seemed to look more like brass, which I like. After painting and scuffing everything up, I went to assembly, started with the scope. You can see how I took the sandpaper to the part and you can see where the, the, the steel showed through, which I kind of liked here. The files for this I got from Thingiverse. I will put the link to the files in the description. I downloaded this four, four and a half years ago. This is the second time I have actually printed this uh, blaster. Uh, the first one is going to become a gift for a family member that is just into Star Wars as I am, but does not have the ability to 3D print his own stuff, nor the time to assemble, unfortunately for him. But he does like to collect a lot of uh, personally made Star Wars stuff. He has a few items that I've made for him. So this is a custom blaster for me. I'm going to use real world screws instead of the 3D printed uh, dolls that came with the kit. If you do download these files, when I downloaded them, they came with a PDF assembly instruction. I recommend following it. I didn't. And it will save you putting together and taking apart different sections of the blaster over and over again if you actually follow the instructions. Putting this rail on first seemed like a good idea to me. Um, it wasn't because I had to constantly keep taking it off to get the other pieces in because there's some guts that are going to go inside the main body which include the trigger. And the rail just the screws going through the rail and into the main body kept getting in my in the way that was my fault it didn't hurt anything to take it apart multiple times but it did add to a lot of time of uh, assembling this here I just 
kind of heat sink a uh, nut into the rail so that the thumb screw can fit. The screws are M3s and they are heated up and then pressed into the thumb screws. It works well for me to do it this way. It's not necessarily the brightest way to do it. Because if you spin it too hard, it will just continue the part, the thumb screw will continue to spin without actually turning the, the screw itself because of the way I did it. It's not, there's not a real good friction fit the way I did it, but I'm not tightening them too much. For the spring, uh, I didn't look to see which one he recommended. This came from a kit that I got from a local Harbor Freight. It's about the right length, I think, but the, the ends are too small to fit over the, the trigger. So rather than try to get the end to fit over the trigger, I decided to drill a hole in it and put a screw through and then just have the spring hold on to the screw. It worked pretty decently and uh, I would recommend if you're doing this and you have the same spring I do, if it if it fits in between the two sections that hold the trigger to do it this way because it makes it easier if you need to make changes in the future. But for the other end, because there isn't a really good way to, for me to drill into the round part and I figured I would probably destroy it if I did, I actually did take a pair of pliers and open up the the end just so that it'll fit over the the stud that was already there for it to work on. And it works. Could it could it have a little more pressure? Maybe. But it works for me, I'm happy. This is gonna sit on a shelf most of the time, maybe be taken as a cosplay weapon for Comic Cons. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna take it to uh, Comic Con this summer or not. And you can see here, it's hard to see, but you can see that the, the screws going through kept getting in the way, so I had to keep taking them off and making slight modifications to get parts that would fit properly. One of the problems I had was I had three different length screws and I kept putting the wrong length in, in, in the hole that I needed. So I would have one that was too long and it would get in the way. So I have to take two, if not all three of the thumb screws off and adjust. Here the bottom plate is I don't remember if there was a screw in the print or not, but um, I decided to take an M6 button head screw. These happen to already be black anodized, so they... Actually black oxide, because they're steel, not anodized, that would be aluminum. And uh, I opened up the hole so that it would fit. It's a little oversized. An M5 is probably the right size for this, but I don't have any M5s. So what I decided to do is just take the screw, try to get it on, but I can't without, and I don't have a drill bit with me right that size. So I'm gonna just heat the screw up just enough so that when I thread it through, it'll melt the plastic and create the whole size I need. You have to be very careful here because if you overheat, you can melt plastic way more than you need. And you can see that the, the little plate doesn't have a lot of material on the one edge. So I'm trying to get it just warm enough so that when I twist it, it actually just basically threads the part for me. And then it does the same thing into the main body.
Now I'm working on the grips. The dowels that came with this, I don't know if I made a mistake when I printed them, if I somehow scaled the Z axis, but they were way too long. So I had to cut them to get them to work. So I had to grab a pair of clippers, cut them, sand them to get it. They were the, the one piece that just didn't seem to fit off the printer properly. And I think maybe I made a mistake. But my printer was already going on something else, so I didn't want to spend the time to actually go and try to print two new little dowels on my printer and waste 20 minutes waiting. Took a little, quite a bit of cleaning up here. They were probably the, the, the of all the things that I had problems with, this is the one that I hated the most because the other problems actually weren't problems. They were just learning how to put this thing together. And here I realized the dowel is too long. Now when I put it together, I can see that it fits. This is just two part epoxy. I don't think it matters what brand you use, use whatever you're happy with. I mean, a lot of people like to use some type of CA or super glue. I don't have any. I'm ordering super glue with an activator because it seems like that works well for a lot of people and I'm kind of jealous. So I clamp this together and clean it up and then I'm going to set it aside for a couple hours to let the glue to set before I do the final touches of adding the nozzle and the scope. And also I noticed that there are no uh, screws on the handle. I'm just holding it with glue, but there are actual, there are holes for screws, but I didn't put any, I didn't print any screws out to put in those holes. The files come with a little plug to go in there, but it, that's all it is, it's just a little plug. And I, I wasn't really happy with it. For what I wanted, I wanted a screw look. So here I'm just cleaning the paint off of the scope so that I can get it to actually adhere to the bracket. You got to be slow with the sanding because you can actually melt this really easily. Mix up a little more two-part epoxy. I try to only mix up what I need at a time. And as I'm mixing this up, I'm realizing, okay, I'm gonna put this together, but how am I gonna hold it? Because this epoxy takes a couple hours to set especially being it's 50 degrees in, the, in, in my uh, workshop while I was doing this. But I've already committed, so I get the glue on the scope, get it lined up, I'm holding it, going, yeah, I'm not gonna do this for a couple hours. So I think a, a quick solution and I use my rotary tool to hold it in place, get everything glued up. Now the last thing to do is to make my screws for the handle grips. So to make the screws I'm using two part epoxy or two part uh, epoxy clay. This is from a company called Epoxy Sculpt. Um, it seems to last a long time for me. I 
bought this probably a couple years ago and you can tell from the one jar that it's getting old but once you start to knead it, it it actually works still so that's a good thing stuff is a little expensive to have it go bad on you too quickly so getting it uh, needed here and so I push a little into the hole this stuff takes about 24 hours to dry um, there's probably about a three hour work time with it before it's hard to work with so I'm just getting it out of the, the grip and then I'm going to use the, the butt end of the tool that I have there to give it an indent And then just give it a little slot so it looks like a screw. Sorry Star Wars fans that say there's no flathead screws in Star Wars. There is in my gun. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Try to mix up, if you're going to use this stuff, exactly what you need. Don't put too much. You can see I made way too much, so I ended up using it on another project off screen. 24 hours later, after it's dry, I decided it doesn't need to be sanded. It looks good, and I decided to paint it the same color I did the thumb screws. This is gonna do it for the gun. I mean, there, there's nothing left for me to do except find some glass to fit in the scope, but it's not necessary for for it to sit on a shelf and be called done for me. Uh, all the movable parts move. I can take it apart with screws. There's only a few places where it's glued together. Um, I'm very happy. I hope you like what you see and. It, if you want to see more stuff like this, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.